Being inside Ottawa City Hall and, you know, the Citizen and Sun City Hall Bureau has been a rare occurrence for the past year since everything's been happening virtually with the municipal government. But the business of municipal government has continued even during these unusual times. And there were some big stories in 2020. The integrity investigation into Council Rick Shirelli wrapped up with Council suspending Shirelli's salary for 450 days. He denies all allegations. Council declared a housing and homelessness emergency in January and approved a refreshed housing and homelessness plan later in the year. The life-altering impacts of COVID-19 took hold of the municipal government in mid-March. The city closed facilities in response to the spread of the virus and Mayor Jim Watson declared a state of emergency. The city tried to figure out how to help small businesses, especially when it came to expanding patios, and a mandatory mask bylaw came into effect. Through the pandemic, the new LRT system was still a big story at City Hall. The year started with train shortages and system breakdowns, leading to the city issuing a notice of default to the Rideau Transit Group. The Transportation Safety Board launched an investigation to crack wheels on LRT vehicles. RTG brought in new executives to run the company and its maintenance arm. There were more details revealed about the city of Gatineau's ambitions to run a tram system into Ottawa amid calls for an Ottawa Hall transit loop. Meanwhile, Ottawa Council approved the corridor to eventually run the Confederation Line to Barhaven. There was some significant governance news. Council approved new ward boundaries and added a ward for the 2022 municipal election. A by-election sent a new Cumberland councillor to City Hall, Catherine Kitts. Council appointed an anti-racism liaison in Rolson King, and by the end of the year changed up some leadership roles with Genesis appointed a deputy mayor. Council approved a 3% property tax increase for 2021 and an uncertain COVID budget. The headline issue was a huge outcry from the public on the Ottawa Police Service adding $13.2 million to its budget. There were plenty of planning controversies. The city's urban boundary expansion and intensification targets drew dozens of public delegates to a joint committee meeting. There was a court hearing over Clublink's intention to bulldoze the Canada Golf and Country Club. And council approved a 10-year extension to the Lansdowne Park Agreement with the Ottawa Sports and Entertainment Group. Finally, in the Transportation Department, the city launched an e-scooter pilot project and photo radar hit Ottawa streets in July. And many of those stories will have legs in 2021, especially those related to the pandemic. The city is organizing a vaccination task force and city council will have to start thinking about economic recovery. And in fact, council will have to start thinking about bolstering the city's own finances in light of the pandemic. We still have to find out how many people are gonna to return to public transit in 2021. And are we doing enough to help the most vulnerable people, the people without homes in this city? The Rick Shirelli storyline is still going to be written. He's challenging the Integrity Commissioner's jurisdiction in court in 2021. And we're waiting to see what the city and the Ottawa Sports and Entertainment Group cook up when it comes to a possible Lansdowne Park 2.0 revitalization. Whether it's from inside City Hall or observing video meetings from afar, we'll be watching. For Post Media, I'm John Willing.